Hello, hello. Today I want to talk uh, talk uh, with you about Spring Security again. And uh, this time in server side rendering context with time leaf. So it's a little bit different, but nonetheless it's pretty cool and very useful because server side rendering now has an upgoing trend again. And my opinion the best way is to use server side rendering for the parts that you want to be fast and then you put the right amount of JavaScript in it. In here, it just started. I just want to explain and show the authentication. And so I have a very simple design right now just to uh, prove that. In here, we have a sign in button, which obviously brings us to this page. We also have an index page. And if you want to sign in, you can enter maybe some names. Is this was wrong, we get feedback. But if I enter the proper name, I go to in here, I have a successful success message in here, which I don't display right now, but I could. And right now I can go to the secured page on the star it's post. And if I log out, I leave I go back to the login page from that page, right? And I can't enter posts again without logging in. So other nice thing is that there are sessions stored and I store them in the database right now. I could also store them in a key value storage like Redis, but for now I store them here. And what you see is my session in here. And if I delete this session, maybe as an admin, as an admin or whatever. And the user wants to navigate in here to posts again. It's not working because the session is validated right now. <coughs> so that's pretty nice. And now let's just look at the code. First point is again security configuration. And in here I <coughs> have, the, have the password encoder again typical the DAO authentication provider and the security filter chain which is now a little bit different for testing case in here in here there are the permitted routes and the high just blocked post but normally you would just um, allow them all except some user specific pages like profile or whatever then in here I have the session management with uh, invalid session URL, so you get logged out. I have set a maximum sessions of two, so the user can at the same time um, be not uh, logged in on more than two devices. If so, he will get logged out on the third or on some other device. And the session will always be created. Login is form login with a login page, which is in here. And the logout just um, deletes the cookie, uh, has a logout URL where I can post the logout to, and as I can log out on any page, you know. Um, yeah, let's see if it's working. Oh, for login, I'm to index. I stay on the index page. If I were on any other page, I would stay on that page too. So, that's this code, and there could also be a remember me cookie or token which I haven't set yet, would be stored, can be stored in the database too. And you may ask why I also uh, or added the session to my database. Imagine if you have lots of users uh, trying to enter your page or your application, and now you're starting a second instance, a third instance, and whatever. And one user is logging into instance one, and now he makes a request, and the request goes maybe to instance two. He's not authenticated in instance two, he's just authenticated in instance one. If you use uh, in memory um, session storage, so with the uh, storing in the database on Redis or whatever, you uh, your user is not logging out when switching between different instances of your application. What do you need to do to get these sessions and user sessions attributes in here? 
So you need to go to your Gradle and you need to add Spring Session ZDBC uh, or Data Redis, uh, Redis for Redis. And this is, a, is something I added also right in this video. It is for yeah, managing content and HTML in Timeleaf, which is quite handy. So this is for you have a layout, and in your layout you have a layout fragment content and those other pages just define um, maybe a title and then the layout fragment content this is the content is displayed this title is set to the page title so here you see Hauptseite and so on so it's very very handy to use for the different pages And yeah, so that's need to be added for sessions, the dependency, and you also need to go to application jammer and you can specify a table name or else it would be kosher called Spring Sessions by default and you need to initialize schema always so when you start the application these tables get generated and it will automatically uh, determine which database type you're using and will create, use the script for your database and also specify the clean cron your, which will run every day at one o'clock right now so at every day one o'clock all the expired sessions in your user sessions will be removed and that's that's, a, that's good because you won't have thousands or ten thousand or hundred thousand millions of dead sessions in your database and to emphasize this Redis would be faster Redis would be the way to go I just for that example used uh, my Postgres database because I wanted to keep some the steps to learn a little bit lower okay what sh else do we need to do for login we have seen this security uh, configuration we need to use a detail service again which is the same user detail service as in the admin block and because lots of code will duplicate at some point I will move code uh, remove code from one project and the block project probably be the, the parent project and the admin block uh, or the admin app will uh, inject or include this project kinda so we can use the classes and don't need to configure all the classes again and again so there's less duplicate code then but yeah we need this for obvious reasons and we need the authentication controller or this controller in here says um, get mapping endpoint for login and that means it just returns login HTML which is in here and it has just this for error messaging and in here it has username password as input and remember me which is not used right now and in here we just have a login button which this type of submit and that's all yeah we and you say type submit the form will submit it and in here it will send to the authenticate endpoint which I have in here and I just need this authentication can put manually because I have the salt if I didn't have the salt in here I could just uh, remove this and go to my security config and set where is login here dot login process URL and I would just say in here or authenticate and it will all be fine right so that's, that's it's just needed I just need this here because I do a little bit more and in here I can get the username and password from the request and fetch the user I need this user because I need salt for my password for the login and then I just generate authentication again authenticate 
set the context, set the session, and you could also create your own uh, security context repository, session security context repository, but it's not needed in that case. And if a successful adds this attribute, I could read this from the URL and show a successful login message and a redirect to my uh, index page. And if the attribute is not found, yeah, invalid username, whatever, I redirect to the login page again and show and display the error message. So just a little note point, the username comes from here, it's just a model attribute which is globally set and uh, you can call it anywhere if you have actually a principle. But um, you could also with sign leaf uh, go into your, let's say in here, and let's see where I've so it goes, uh, authorize and you could also get the username in here so you could use authentication name and would get the name too could just try this in here let's copy this and we will just say in here authentication dot name and if we restart this we should see the name twice so as you see it's another way to get the username but maybe it's good to know um, yeah, so user finder is the same and now we can just look uh, into the page again we saw this with the authenticate and in the header we have this little thing here authorized is authenticated you could also use it with has role and so on and if you want to log out we just make an action with post to log out and that's actually all it's not that much so to summarize you need to have a sign leaf implementation security implementation sign leaf security implementation and for sessions you need this and then you just need to generate and create a fitting config like this and it's very much reduced in comparison to the uh, JSON web token authentication and then you can just build your login and so on and the registration yeah it has nothing to do with uh, this at all so I just spared it Okay, so I hope you learned something and if you want, want to try to build some server-side rendered application and don't uh, let, let, let you fool, let fool you, you can put in JavaScript, you can make stuff dynamic and you should make stuff dynamic. It's not recommended from my perspective to refresh the site, the whole page for every little click you make. A little change you make, but you should the initial initial content should be loaded and generated by your backend, so it's super fast. And after that, if you maybe have a page and you want to uh, change the content of that page, just that page, you can use JavaScript and also fed re REST request with fetch or Axios. So that's all for today. I wish you the best and see you in the next video where we will actually start creating posts in our admin application.